<laughs> you don't drag her across the house, you bring her a bucket. I think, I don't know, I mean, I just wonder how I'd feel if I was her. I think I could compartmentalize a little bit more like Raj is doing. <laughs> but I'm just watching a TV Sorry. show. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Thanks for clicking on this video. Today I want to watch Three Body Problem, Season 1, Episode 6, entitled The Stars, Our Destination. We last left our folks, our intrepid group of folks. Remember when Jin says, I don't know how to fight aliens <laughs> or something. And Augie's like, well yeah, it sounds stupid when you say it that way. But they were fucked. The aliens had made sofons, which, if I can, if I may be so bold as to attempt to describe what they are, they would unfold the small dimensions of the proton, and the proton would become very large indeed. And then, somehow they made them into AI computers. They created two pairs of two, two of which they easily accelerated to light speed, so they were able to get to Earth much quicker than the aliens. So they're two of them, and they're quantumly entangled with each other, so they can instantly, they've got them where they can instantly convey information back and forth, even though they're many light years away, I guess. And uh, so, and they can run around and do shit on our planet, like make you see a countdown clock, or, you know, eavesdrop on your conversations, or make us see things or whatever and they can also get big again apparently and that I think is sort of what's happening this big shield kind of covered the whole planet and a giant eye was like looking at us <laughs> it was totally fucked and very scary and the you are bugs thing was happening and they say they want to stop our science from ever progressing stop us from being able to answer any questions about the world so that we won't progress beyond them before they get here in 400 years from now, I guess. Very sketchy, very scary, and I'd love to see where we're going to go from here. So, um, like, subscribe, comment, and if you like full reactions, the link to my Patreon is down below, and let's get started. Mass panic continues worldwide in the wake of the so-called Eye in the Sky event. Millions of people have taken to the streets. Despite assurances that it will take the aliens 400 years to reach Earth... Humanity will survive this present crisis. death toll has been steadily run. Wow. that an alien race... The Prime Minister is urged in his widely televised speech today... He reiterated that the Santi will not be here for 400 years. So now the whole world knows everything. He started the Stars Our Destination to raise funds for planetary defense. And the Stars Our Destination. Everyone seems to fear the arrival of the Santi. Law enforcement have not determined whether the crisis appears far. The fuck? I thought they were just going to keep that bubble around the planet forever. I guess they lifted it. Maybe we'll see. The eye in the sky event. She hasn't said a word since her lord told us we're all bugs. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. She hadn't said a word since her lord told us we were all bugs. Why did Vera have to die? She taught me how to think like a scientist. She gave me a purpose. Did you order Jack's murder? It was smart and loyal and funny, and you had him slaughtered. Don't just sit there staring at me. Tell me why. On the stage where my father was killed, there was a poster. The slogan said, destroy the old world, forge the new world. It's the only thing I ever agreed with the Red Guards about. Is that what you think you're doing? You betrayed everyone alive. Everyone is going to be born for what? So that aliens who think we're bugs can come here and kill us all? So that they could save us. Didn't you see the eye in the sky? Do you really think they're still trying to save us? No. Hmm. They learn the truth about us. We lie. We deceive. 
we are too dangerous to coexist with. And it never occurred to you that you were risking everything, inviting a more advanced species to conquer our world? I was willing to risk everything. I saw the path we were on. I saw where it led. I, 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 who gave you the right to decide for all of us? You know, Vera always said you were a great physicist, but that's not how you'll be remembered. You're a traitor. How will you be remembered? I'm someone who fought back. Yeah, interesting. I wonder if she regrets any, any of it. It's hard to say. She looked a little stunned when she saw the you are bugs well, thing. The, real the Santee are real, and they have declared war on us. I plan on fighting back. If their Sophons can see and hear everything, won't they know our plans? They can't lie. We know that from the Evans transcripts. And they've only got two Sophons. They told us so themselves. Their technology moves slow, ours moves fast. That's why they're going after our research. How do you propose we catch up? We keep developing the technology we have, and in the meantime, we need to learn more about the way they do things. We're going to launch a probe to intercept the enemy fleet. We need to know the enemy to fight the enemy. They're traveling at 1% light speed. That should be our goal as well. Perhaps in a hundred years, 1% light speed might be achievable. But if you want to launch a reconnaissance probe immediately, it's simply impossible. It's not impossible. They did it. Why can't we? We are not them. No, you're not. There's only two soft ones. I've ordered every particle accelerator on the planet to start up again, 24-7. Now, how busy do you reckon that'll keep man past so far? Not very. One so far can circumnavigate the planet in an eighth of a second. There's 2,000 accelerators. All right, let's say you align the schedules and have experiments on opposite sides of the globe happen at regular intervals. That might keep one so far going indefinitely. Better yet, build one on the moon. The moon? Why not? That's three seconds there and back. That still leaves the other one to paint countdowns on people's eyes and drive them mad. Focusing on a single target would keep the other sofa going constantly. That's a huge cost for the Santi. There you go. You're working for me already. I'm launching a reconnaissance probe to intercept the Santi. <laughs> the engineers. Find me a way to get a probe to 1% light speed or faster utilizing existing technology. This is great. You want some? No, I'm good. You might could do other technology it's not so bad right now. without fucking particle accelerators. You don't have to do this stiff upper lip thing with me, English. I'm telling you, when it's my turn on the rack, I'm going to be crying like a baby. Every now and then, my body actually feels pretty good. And then I can just concentrate on the sheer fucking terror of it all. Not that I've started believing in God exactly, but I've sort of taken to picturing myself up there when it's all over. Hey, guys. Hey. I like this group of people. The English really suck at beaches. <laughs> English really suck at beaches. Yeah, it's like freezing. It's like a, our San Francisco beach. It's freezing half the time. Now, the energy required to propel a probe of even a few kilograms to 1% light speed is massive. However, we do have a source of that energy. I mean to use our nuclear weapons. Perhaps you've been watching too many Vin Diesel films. The mass of a ship like that would make it almost impossible to launch anyway. That's very true. But as you can see on page five, the bombs won't be on the probe. And how exactly is it going to work? That's on page 12. I'm borrowing an old idea from Stanislav Ulam in the 1940s called nuclear pulse propulsion. I love her. Imagine a series of a thousand nuclear devices, evenly spaced in distance, stretching from Earth toward the Santi fleet. Now these bombs could be put in place using existing spacecraft. The probe would have a mass of under 1,000 kilograms and be propelled by a radiation sail. As the probe passes the first bomb, it detonates, accelerating it towards the second, which detonates, accelerating it again and again. Like steps on a staircase, each bomb brings us closer to our destination. That's one way to do it. It's a very creative notion, but it's totally untested with zero margin and for error. And it would surely violate more than a few nuclear treaties. Not to mention the cost. Treaties can be amended. Our job is to come up with a solution to a scientific problem. It's someone else's job to come up with the money. I compliment you, Dr. Chang, for this entertaining proposal. I think it's worth pursuing. The closer we get to them, the more we'll know about them. It's the first proposal of her to get us to 1% in our lifetimes, and I have no intention of dying with my agency having accomplished fuck all. There you go. Why are these... these guys are all pricks. 
Like, ah, you can't do nothing. Let's find you an office. I mean, look into this. Modify it if you want. But don't fucking sit there and go, you can't do that. Let's do more research. The richest men and women have acquired ownership rights over stars in the Milky Way galaxy. I don't get it. Yeah, what is it? It's a fundraiser for the war effort. Bake sale for billionaires. We should be using that money to help people right now. Well, it's much more exciting to imagine a future war of the worlds than it is to muck around with our current problems. Yeah. I just want a beer. Any beer. Well, the pub might be getting some in tonight if you're willing to fight the crowd. You have three minutes. I thought that... Open the window, would you? It's stuffy in here. <laughs> I have to say, sir, I know this one. The window. It's sealed shut. And you asked me to open it to see how I respond to an impossible task. Do I give up? Do I use some kind of tool? Do I break the window? <laughs> two minutes. Sir. Two, two minutes. I thought I comported myself well in Panama. Oh, you're looking for commendations. Maybe you should go back to the Navy. I want to work for you. And I want you to realize that someone with a background in nuclear engineering and naval strategy should be on your space fleet team. What space fleet team? The one designing our first ships. You've had it going for a month. You don't have clearance to know about that. How long have you known about it? Two weeks. Then you're two weeks late coming to me. I don't want to overstep. If you're afraid of overstepping, maybe you shouldn't be here. Put me on the space fleet team. Done. <laughs> Thank you. You'll love it on Mare Embryum. On the moon? We're building a base there. That's where we're going to assemble the ships. Close the window on your way out. Close the window on your way out. <laughs> well, he didn't really want it open. He did give him a little test. The window. Oh, thank God. So this is, they're doing the thing by the beach. I can't believe you're working for that fascist fuck again. I know how he comes across, but he's a fighter. And after everything I've been through, everything we've been through, how can I not help fight You sound like you admire him. I think he's trying. Just more than most people can say. He's a murderer. Asante declared war on us. That's what the eye in the sky was. Has Raj told you anything about Panama? Okay, you're scaring me. You should ask him. Let's see if he tells you the truth. I will. But the Asante are real. She's got PTSD over her murdering children. She still did it. What are you even working on with that piece of shit? I need a radiation sail. About five square kilometers in area, but with a mass of less than 50 kilograms. No. Everything yes. depends on this nano sail, and there's no one who can design it besides you. I said no. We've got some of the best physicists in the world working on this. The resources are insane. For the last time we gave the best physicists in the world insane resources, they gave us Hiroshima. No, I'm not designing a weapon. Not yet. Yeah, but... Hey. Fuck. You're being invaded by crazy aliens. You know, you could have told me. I don't want to worry you. What could you have done? I'd been fucking furious if you just... If you'd gone and just... Not told me. You want me to stay a few more days? Are these two gonna hook up? You go and save the world, and I will be just fine right here. Imagine this one's you. This one's me. Hmm. Jen's still here? No, she left about 20 minutes ago. And I've never seen anyone love someone like you love her, and you're just gonna take that to the grave. Do you know how many times I've played this out in my mind? And every time it ends up awkward and unfair to Jin because she obviously doesn't feel the same way. Maybe she does. How do you know that? All right, fine. I go there, I get down on my knees, and I compose her a fucking sonnet. Then what? What's she gonna do? She's gonna leave her boyfriend? Fuck him! You should absolutely do that. She has a boyfriend! Fuck him. <laughs> she already doesn't like him. <laughs> yeah, but doesn't Jin know? Didn't they have something in the past? I guess they didn't. I guess there is a love story in this that's gonna be that. I just told some girl, don't worry, there's no love story. She's like, I hope there's not a love story in it. But it's starting to peek out a little more. 
And I just saw the woman that plays Rosalind something that plays, uh, you know, the woman who started this whole thing on a talk show. And she said, there's a love story. How could you not be bothered when a thousand people were killed? The people on that ship murdered scientists. They crippled our research so the Santee can murder the rest of us more easily. These are the people who murdered Jack. What bothers me is that you seem so comfortable with the result. If you're not comfortable with being part of a war, it doesn't make sense for you to be leading a reconnaissance mission. Don't drag me into the mud with you. What I'm doing and what you did don't even compare. Yeah, well, some of us have to do the ugly stuff so you can keep your hands clean. Oh. You think Augie's innocent? Her nanofibers did all the cutting. And she's fucking gutted about it. She's been drinking herself to sleep every night. That was very interesting. Yeah, Augie's gonna <laughs> ruin her liver. You don't drag her across the house, you bring her a bucket. I think, I don't know, I mean, I just wonder how I'd feel if I was her. I think I could compartmentalize a little bit more like Raj is doing. But I'm just watching a TV Sorry. show. Fuck, maybe you're right. Maybe I shouldn't be working for Wade. Your work. It's the one thing you can't give up on. What did he dye? His hair? Or is his hair always that black? Oh, he's wearing a hat. So he went all the way there and it's turning back. All those hours talking to the Santee, he didn't even mention Vera, his own child, not even once. Why did she jump? Maybe she told her the truth. I got careless in my messages to Evans. Vera was always very good with computers. She read everything. What did she say to you? Not a word. She didn't even leave a note. I still haven't been charged with any crime. No more questions. I'm done. She's free to go wherever she likes, but I want a full report of her movements every four hours. I guess she didn't really do anything. You can say something mean about me. Just one? Just, Just one Just one, and we're even. You're beautiful. <laughs> In a boring way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take it. I like it boring. You're like a movie star, but from really bad movies. You know, that mortifying trek to London wasn't a total waste. I realized something. Wrong person went to go and see Jen. Doesn't need me to go and spill my guts to her. She's got a man. Oh, well, you're twice the man that he is, and I don't care what, what you say. What she needs, and what she came all the way down here for, is you. Is you. If I had your knowledge, or an ounce of your talent, I would give it to her on the spot. You don't know the man she's working for. He's a monster. I know that she wouldn't do anything if it wasn't right. She wouldn't have come all the way down here if she didn't need you. I'd rather stay with you. And even you. Even you. I think the holiday's almost over. Ah. What does that mean? He won't like this. Should we go in there with you? He'll like that even less. There's a problem. All the propulsion is coming from the bombs. The probe doesn't have any way to decelerate. That won't be a problem. And we have to assume that they know the spy probe is coming because of the sophons. They'll destroy it. That won't be a problem either. Why won't it be a problem? They won't destroy the probe. So they're just going to let it sail through the fleet and take pictures? They'll pick it up. We're not sending a camera. We're sending a human being. Whoa! Are they going to send Jin? Spare a pound or two for humanity. Sorry. Oh, it's fine. Maybe next time. It's all right. Ah, for the humanity that you fucking just doomed. Tell Wade, Agustina Salazar is here. Agustina Salazar. She is beautiful. After Chung gave you her location, that's a breach of security. So far as both. <laughs> this is her house. Yeah. I know you can hear me if you want to. You have learned that we are liars. 
You no longer trust us, so now you are coming to stamp us out. All because of me, the first liar you met. I'm an old woman whose old beliefs have led us down this terrible path. But I still have an idea or two left in me. And centuries from now, there may well be a fair fight. Or no fight at all. Hmm, interesting. Is it the boats? But really big? I wonder if he's gonna die. Or something. Is he gonna go compose his sonnet? I mean, that is cool. Appointment for William Downing. Ah, yes, Mr. Downing. Do you know much about the stars our destination? We could begin with the interactive presentation. No, that won't be necessary. I've already made up my mind. I'm here to buy a star. It's you. Ah, I don't know what that means. We didn't really get a, a long description of what the stars our destination did. Something about buying stars, but I'm not sure what sense it made. So, like I said, I just told the girl, there's no love story in this. <laughs> there hasn't really been until this point. Now it seems a little love story-ish, and it, perhaps it'll blossom further in the last couple episodes. But, um, that was cool. I mean, there was a lot of sort of character stuff. But I really, so what it... I guess the big takeaways would be Jin's idea to send this probe, the fact that what's his name wants to send an actual human being with the idea that the Santi will pick it up. That could be Jin. I, I imagine the, that, because I kind of was getting this sense a couple episodes ago. You know, a lot of times when you follow a character, you forget, but the, there's a reason you're following this character. Like, this character may turn out to be kind of the hero of the story, you know. So, perhaps Jin will, you know, end up being the one who goes on the trip. And I do feel like she's kind of almost like the main character in a way. I mean, they do have a lot of other characters. And they do, but definitely Jin's the one that we mostly focused on. Jin and then I'd say Augie, maybe second. And, uh... And of course, this guy Will, I guess his name is, who's dying. We've kind of, but but his whole thing has been rather dull from the very beginning. It's been I'm dying. It's not that dull. It's interesting to see his character and how he reacts to this death idea. But it, there's not a lot of he's basically turned into some sort of Zen <laughs> master. <laughs> In, with the result of this knowledge, knowledge of his impending doom. But he's... Maybe he'll be the guy they send. Who knows? So yeah, the, uh, this is the big takeaway. The probe. Her idea for the probe. The fact that they're going to send a person. Augie... Making the decision to help. Even though we know she's been torn up by the... <clears throat> I mean, it makes sense that you'd have a... Take a beat to have her come to terms with the idea of helping more because obviously she didn't I mean we already established that she wasn't the type of person that was going to be happy with the results of her last mission you know and then you know so she wasn't going to be like yeah let me continue to help you know so she, you know but she we've we've now taken the time for her to drink herself to death be kind of talked into it by Will a little bit, you know, and decide to, okay, I'm going to be part of this, you know. But it took an episode to go to get her to that point in a believable way. And um, I would say that's basically it. This episode wasn't. And, you know, I guess, you know, they left us in such a with the eye in the sky thing. But I guess we just started like, okay, the plan's back to normal. They're not 
maintaining this shell around the planet or something. I thought, I thought it might be like, who knows? I thought it might be like, next episode would be 400 years later this thing's been on the planet the whole time. Or something. But, it doesn't look like that's happening. So, this is wild. And then I guess we did see, and then we got, another thing is, I cannot remember her name for the fucking life of me. Let me, let me, I should actually write, this, figure this out. Oh uh, yeah, Yi Wenji. Alright, Yi Wenji is, she, we kind of got an insight into her actual um, thoughts. Only at the very end when she was away. Um, well, we also got found out that the reason maybe Vera had killed herself was because, or I think it was Vera, her daughter, had killed herself was because she had t found out about her communications with Evans. We don't really know more than that other than she's read everything or whatever. And so, she, whatever, she might have just taken that and something about that brought her to the suicide. But <clears throat> Yi Wenji, she, we didn't get too much from the questioning, but we did get, we did get at the end her kind of saying, sort of in a prayer-like way, in a way. She was going, I don't know if you can hear me. Maybe you can hear me or not. Maybe you're listening. But she kind of said, I still got a few tricks up my sleeve. I could help fight you. I could make it a fair fight, or maybe there doesn't have to be a fight at all. Which was interesting. She's, you know, and she kind of like knocked herself. For, she was like, I was, what did she say exactly? She said, I was, it was my belief structure that kind of made me make this terrible decision and brought us to this point. It sounded like she was basically changing her mind on it, and as she should. And so she made a naive decision as a youngster that's turned, that's basically fucked all of humanity, basically. But she's kind of saying, maybe she'll help, too, to fight. So, pretty fucking wild. Very, very intrigued. That was episode six, and there's two more episodes. We didn't get much from Saul. I guess that guy's name is Da Shi, Benedict Wong. Yeah, he's such a cool actor. I don't even, I'd like to try to think what else have I seen him. I feel like I've seen him in a bunch of things, but I fucking love him in this. He's so fucking good. He's in upcoming Avengers movie. I guess he was in some other movies. God, he's younger than me. <laughs> Jesus, by three years. That's insane. He's as old as my brother. You see people your own age when you're my age, and you're like, those guys are old. But you still think you're <laughs> a lot younger <laughs> than you are. Hey, he's been in a bunch of, like, Spider-Man bullshit and stuff. Oh, he's in What We Do in the Shadows? Oh, the TV series. The okay, guy's in She-Hulk, Doctor Strange. Maybe he plays the same character in all these Marvel movies or something. God, I don't know what he's in. What do, you, what do I know him from? I guess nothing. <laughs> I feel like I've seen him in something, but he's fucking so, so great in this. I adore that, his fucking character. All right, well, anyway, that was great. So, uh, like, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you next time. If you like uh, full reactions, I'll link to my Patreons down below. All right, bye. Thanks.